Hey everyone, it's Joe Lyons from the Automator, and uh, here's another video of what we did this week. Now before we do, I want to mention something here. Let me switch over to the, my de desktop. Um, these are going to be in our hero call. We have three hours a week, and right now, at Friday, there's two hours out of this one hour. And what we're going to start doing is, before the hero calls on Saturday, we're going to have like hero webinars, where we cover, here are some of the topics I've outlined. Um, it's not a hard, fast list. I wrote these out in a couple of minutes. Just say, here are some of the ideas. Um, but basically, we're making them available to hero members. We might share a couple. We'll make them public, you know, a couple of them. But if you're a hero member, you get to attend and ask questions, right? So it's one of the things. And also, by the way, um, I don't know if I released the video yet by the time this comes out, but we have an introductory to the hero club which is I think $1.99 a month or $2.99 a month. The, the first month you get for that discount, then it's like $15.99 a month. But that's because the value is so, it's amazing, right? We have hundreds of hours in the Hero program recorded. And then of course we have the three hours a week. And now this will be like a fourth, we're gonna do it like once a month where we have like a little webinar where we teach a, a solid hour on a given topic. So um, take a look for that. Now, let me go to Prompt Assistant and launch the what we've recently modified. This is a script we made in one of these videos where it looks on my B drive, which is really enormous, a lot of data in there, zooping across and getting a list of all auto hockey. So I've found 63 files um, in the last week we've edited and worked on this um, this big old list and compare. These were two, I think I was looking, um, we had a, a call with Rizwan and, and Isaiah was teaching objects and um, we were sort of making a joke at how, not, not a joke because it was also a compliment of, Maestrith had done some work in the past on these things, and he, he would use a letter for like A, B, and C, for C, D, and E, for E, D, and F, or whatever. And, it, and it's like, instead of putting words in, it was a really good teaching exercise of why you want to use words, not just letters. Now, Maestrith would do all the stuff in his head and get really nested in an object. Um, and he would admit, too, when he comes back, it takes a lot more time to study your code because we all forget what, what was going on at that point in time, right? So... This is a, um, that was a teaching example. I didn't actually do anything with those. Um, we, I actually featured this, I think last week we talked about these two scripts. Um, that's because I ran it on Monday and said today's Sunday. I'm just getting done day earlier, so that's a little cheating there. The ad required, this one goes through and adds your, um, you know, the, the required. Someone had asked if we had that, and uh, we were looking at it. It adds the required directive. If you haven't started working a V2 yet, this is a great script. It'll add it at the beginning. It basically prepends it to your file to add um, V. We did that one where it adds required V1, but you know because I hadn't done anything in V2 yet, so I could loop across all my files, add that to it, and not have to worry about it. Um, the script object. This is Isaiah's one. We don't. He had an initial one. Then with us, he's really beefed it up. But it's our scripting object we use for licensing for all the information and stuff. And even in Prompt Assistant now, like in Prompt Assistant, let me pull it up again. When we go to customize and help, we can check for updates and it's using that script object to see, hey, I, I'm on the newest version. So it does that for us, right? It stores that information, stores a lot of information. And uh, yep, difficulty calculator. So we had, uh, Rizwan's been really picking up learning V2. He's our, our newest employee. And he, uh, we said, hey, let's look at all our V1, all our scripts on our S drive. And it's our S drive right here because I searched my B drive, but I could force us to look at my S drive, but then we would miss some, some other things. But the S drive are all of our scripts that we work on at the automator that we put as downloads and whatnot, right? And um, we looped across all of our scripts to say, well, which ones have a requires V1 in it? And then we'll just look at them and say, should we create a V2 version of this, right? Because usually if something's already created, it's not worth converting. But some of these are really simple. And we said, hey, okay, let's um, let's do that. So the that's what this, we were working on a script to help automate that. Um, and this one, V1 to V2 difficulty calculator, we have a script that looks at how hard it's going to be to convert a script. And we adapted that script to loop across all of our files and say, for us, give us a total score because that has a weighted value. Um, this one, this one does, but our, our new one just has a total value. Um, the HK forum. So Rizwan was using Rafidium, which is great for web scraping. And he was looping over. I asked him to go grab a couple sub forums on the auto hockey forum. So there's the, the V2 scripts and we get like, who's the main author when it was posted, the, um, number of views, number of replies. 
And then, so we looked at the V2 subforum of the newest scripts. So we get an idea, hey, is there something we haven't heard about that we should be aware of? And then I said, also, let's get the V1. And so we can look at the V1, find popular scripts, and then look on V2 and see if there's one in there already. And maybe that's how we decide there's something we want to create, right? Um, so, yeah, so that's what that was about. Uh, scripts to work on, V2 scripts, fun and fun. I don't I have no idea. Example script. And callbacks. What is this? Scripts and functions. I actually I, let me open the folder. I, oh, these are. Oh, this these are the um. Example things ripped out of the documentation. I think. I, I'm honestly not sure. Yeah, I think this is the. Um, oh, is that for notify? But I don't. See, oh, it is. Examples lib, but I don't see notify anywhere. But are these all, these are all notified. That's really weird. You'd think the, it would have uh, notify. Here's V2. You'd think it'd have notify in there. But um, those are all, by the way, in prompt assistant. We showed, uh, Michael was, uh, had us have a consultation the other day. And we showed him prompt assistant. And then we're like, by the way, here, import these modules. And so let me, let me show you. Um, I'll open up the, let me make sure I get the right version of Studio. So we have a version of Studio that will run V2 code. And that's this version. So I'm going to hit new. Now in prompt assistant, I have the notify and here's, um, let's do a simple notify with a duration. So this dumps in how to use, now I need the include up above here to include that class, but this would be the code on how to do that. And I would get a nice simple notify. So that's, um, actually, let's see if the, I don't know where that's stored. I think that's somewhere in here. How to use, let's see what that does. Download, notify, oh, we should have one, which actually, well, of course, we don't know your path, so that's probably why that's not in there, um, but somewhere in here, yeah, so those are both that, we should have the, I just don't know where that path, let me see if I can get the path, lib, yeah, this is really weird, lib, oh, was he doing stuff with graffitium, description functions, lib notify v2 here we go so um, and that by the way is get active path so i can easily highlight files and do that so i'm gonna say include studio i i, I don't like that it does that but what um and i can't remember in v2 let's just do this i'm gonna save this And it crashed. This is why we haven't made that one available. But nice is now I have a, a working example of how it crashed because um, I've been trying to tell Isaiah of like how it crashes, and now we have a working example. So include. I don't want to do that. So include that. Let me save this as. Notify example. And then, what? Somehow that crashed prompt assistant? That was really weird. So, notify, let's do this icons and images. Yeah, let's do icon with text. We'll save this, we'll launch it. And there's my little notification with a question mark. So I think there's a couple examples here. Um, but yeah, you get the idea, right? Prompt Assistant allows us to, we can export. I can come in here, customize. I can select like this and hit export. I think I have to do it over here though. Um, here and hit export. And it exports all of that with everything, with the icons and everything. So it's really, really cool. And we're slowly adding more and more modules. So we do the work and then you can borrow it, right? Um, the Excel function library um, I have is in there. The API syntax writer is in there. We have one on SQL, which I haven't shared that one yet, uh, but SQL examples. So yeah, lots of cool stuff. Anyway, that's what we've been working on with that. Let's go back to here. Um, Rafadium. I've asked Irfan. He, he got a new mic, and I was amazed at how much better the quality of him speaking was. So I've asked him to make some videos on using Rafadium for web scraping, and then also to add to create a Rafadium library with all the examples for Prompt Assistant, so it'll make it easy to share with people on how to do certain things, right? So that'll be cool. Um, 
NHK Studio Project. I have no idea. Oh, it's zero bytes anyway. Um, YouTube API. Now, we have a tool that goes and scrapes subtitles, and we're building that tool. I demonstrated it last week of showing how it works. But it, it goes, and it, the API calls get the list of videos for a given channel. It gets the metadata, like the tags and other things like that for the channel, the number of views, the number of likes for that video. But it doesn't get subtitles because every time you pull the subtitle, it's like 200 credits and you get 10,000 for the day, which doesn't sound like that should be a problem, but we, we burned through them very quickly in, in our court, in our um, channel because we have so many videos. So I asked uh, Irfan to look at the API and say, hey, if we actually paid to use the API, you know, what would it cost us to rip our, like, our channel, which is a pretty well-established channel with 1,400 videos-ish. Um, most channels, like the other auto hockey channels we ripped, they had like 200 videos or so. So ours is, is a lot bigger in that, the quantity wise. And a lot of our stuff are hours long, right? Um, but, uh, so I want to see, cause we want to outsource this and sell this to like other channels, like let's say like a cooking channel, right? And, um, right now we use Rafadium to scrape over and grab the subtitles, which is fine. It's free. It just takes time with the API. It'll be really, really fast and, and reliable. So we're going to look at that. Um, stream deck I was working on let me let me see here where is it is it in here yeah th these are every morning my dad I got my dad using telegram and so I wrote a list of things that I put in as a variable you know these are each line is a greeting right that I'm going to send to him and then I'm going to automate sending it through telegram and so I had looked at this one because I have a stream deck where I can press a button and it activates like Isaiah's or Irfan or Rizwan. It activates them in Telegram. So I'm like, okay, I can borrow that to then randomly pick a line from this text file and send it through Telegram, right? You can you can have a bot, but then it shows that the bot did the post. So I want it coming from me. Um, and I might even tell my dad I'm doing this, but you know, these are random enough. And if we do it first, right, it's... Um, it won't be easy to tell because they're all a little bit different. And I, I wrote a lot of them. I used ChatGPT in a few, but I wrote a lot of them. So they're still me. Um, so that's that. The test. We had someone write us on using um, Base64. I did a video years ago of how to work with pasting images with AutoHockey without working from a file. So you can encode your image into Base64 encoding, save that into a, still a file, but you could have multiple images in one file, right? And then you can use AutoHotKey to paste that where you want it to. So he, he was struggling with getting it to work for V2. And so I asked Irfan to take a look at it and say, do we, I think, because we were converting the GDI library to V2. So he's like, yeah, we already have the pieces for this. So um, we sent that to him. At some point I'll have to make a video on it, uh, but it's, yeah, it's a it's a cool thing. If you paste a lot of pictures, it's it's really handy, right? Especially if you paste the same picture multiple times. Very handy. Um, V2 sharing. Yeah, still same kind of thing. Clip share. Clip share is our tool. We're now, we're getting it. We're adapting it where we can share it with other people and then they can have their own version, but it allows us, me to hit like, I can copy text or a file and then Isaiah's can paste it on his computer. So pretty darn cool. Um, we're making it where, let's see, I haven't run it. So this is, a, let's see if it, uh, let's see how Rizwan did. So let's see if this will launch. No, of course not. That's a weird, um, weird file. I don't know if that's um, a problem, but yeah, clip GUI. I don't even know what that is. So yeah, I haven't uh, played with it, but he, he had his own version. Yeah, this is his version. Um, let me try it from... But even that, oh, this is the work in progress one. Maybe that's what I should have launched. Uh, I have a hotkey that allows me to send a message. Oh, settings, let's see. Alt, Shift, M, message window. Ah, so now we have it in a list view. So we can, um, I can select that. Oh, come on. There we go. And send. Let's see. I don't know if that'll actually work. Oh, good. I sent myself a message. Um, that's the, another alter. So those names are hard coded were in their own edit fields and so uh let me go try it again um alt shift m so now the tool will read a file and it'll look for what's in there and these are these are dynamic so that way they're not hard coded right and so we can give this and depending on who's got an account so to speak 
um, they'll be listed here. And there's a select all. Oh, good. He added the select all and deselect all. So we can uh, send them to multiple people. Um, yeah, so that's just an extra benefit of that tool. Uh, let's just get rid of that. Okay, color under mouse. So I have this. Let's open the V1 version. I think it's Windows C. Um, yeah, Windows C. Let me launch it and see if... Windows C. So that that's the color of that, and it's... Oh, I, I don't love that, but it's not horrible. I don't know why we have the XY that doesn't need to be there. Let's try it again. It gets the white. Yeah, this shouldn't... Uh, maybe we can use our Notify class, because I don't want... I hate having to click again. Um, yeah, it's getting the color under your mouse. Sometimes, you know, that's really something you need really quickly. So, in the old tool that I had, uh, it would display this this in the color, which we could probably still do. I can't remember if you can use hexadecimal colors in the in a in a color thing here, but it would show you that. Um, I do like that he shows the color, but we did it, which is showing the font color before. I think it's Control Shift. No, not Control Shift C. Um, I have it embedded in my main script. Um, Alt, Alt Window C. Let me see. There we go. So this is Matrix M function, and that color. This is displaying that color. That's he added the X, which, which I should have told him that's not needed. That's just something Matrix had in there, but I, I never use it. Uh, it's and this is automatically copied to the clipboard, which maybe his tool did. Let me come back and try it in his. Oh, it does say copied, right? But I wouldn't. I wouldn't say copy. Whatever, it's fine. Um, and also, like it, to me, I we could need to discuss whether that pound sign is included or not. But yeah, you get the idea. So that's one of the ones. Apparently, he's already started to convert to V2. Uh, or no, this is the V1 version. So he's going to work on creating that in V2. A simple example. I oh, know that one. That one must be because no, it still says V1. All right, I'm confused, but it doesn't matter. That's one that we're converting over. Let me uh, exit out of that guy because I got a lot of stuff running. And go back to here. Uh, I'm out. Oh, there's a V2 version. I don't think he's done it yet, though. Um, the compare sets. Here's the V1 version. I love. I wrote this when I was working at TI, and it um, it allows you. So here here's some, and let's copy some of these guys and put them down here, and let's copy a couple of these. I'm going to put them up here, and now when I hit run, it says, hey, what is only in list A, what's only in list B, and then what's in both, right? So, and I have a hotkey, so Control-Shift-A will give me this list, Control-Shift-B will give me that, and Control-Shift-C will give me the blending of the two. And also, notice this is red and blue. What do red and blue make? They make purple, right? So, makes it really easy, it gives you the counts of how many are also there. When you work with... Uh, databases, a lot of things. Often you need a quick way to, or I want to dedupe a, a file based on email address and see who's in both, right? It's a great way to say this one's in this list, this one's in this list, this one's in both, right? So yeah, it's very handy. So that one we're converting over to V2. Um, that's those. Remove metadata. We have a tool. Uh, let me launch it. So I have it in Prompt Assistant. So I, I launch a lot of stuff now. I'm, I'm migrating from Quick Access Pop-Up. So remove metadata. Um, and this you could drag, I could drag an MP4 file in here, or I think any kind of video, and it will remove like the artist and title and other crap that I, I don't personally want. Um, and then we just updated how it's displaying it. And I think it plays a noise now, a sound. Um, let me see if I remember right. This folder has a video. Yeah. So I'm going to drag this into here. Okay. I don't know. You may or may not have heard that sound but now it says done and it broke before this was blending right in so now it's separate and if we had multiple videos i could probably drag both of these yeah and it, oh and it just yeah it burned through them but um yeah you get the idea it's very cool so this tool as well as some other tools of fmpeg we're going to be um creating a licensed version to sell it'll be cheap like you know 5.99 or something but um it's very very cool the get active path i mentioned that earlier like even in this tool if i it should work if i hit Control shift c if i'm on a auto hotkey gui this is the path to that script if i'm in studio Control shift c gives me the path to that file if i'm in site 
path to that file. If I'm in Word or Excel, it path to the file. VS Code, path to the file. If I'm on an open or save dialog box, um, and I select something here, I can hit it and get the path to that file. If I'm on Chrome, and this is an interesting one, if I go to a page, let's see here. Um, here's something from, this is how I use it a lot, right? So I'll, I'll come in here and go, hey, here's a good article. I want, here. here's how to, um, here's how I got the Copilot button without buying a new laptop. So I might highlight this, Control Shift C, and now see it down here, if I go to Word and Paste, that is a pretty hyperlink. Um, and you can see with the URL is the page. That's why it's the path like to that page, right? If I don't have text selected and I'm on a page and I hit it, it will just return um, the path. So just the path alone to my clipboard. So I, I really, I use that tool a lot. It's really handy and it's a great way to just have a quick way to cite a page or whatever. So yeah, that's that one. VS Code. So for the Get Active Path, what we realized was Isaias had changed his hotkey in VS Code, and it, our tool wouldn't work for him because we had hard coded it because it's really complex. And so um, after the Hero Call, when we released the script, um, Hero members often get the the, the, the newest stuff first, right? I, I release all our videos there first and everything. The um, we we went back and fixed it, so we read the JSON file that where it stores the, the hotkey structure and what is associated. And we actually, if I remember right, we check if there's one exists. If it doesn't exist, we, if, it, if, it, if the file doesn't exist, that means they haven't remapped it and we just leave things. If they have remapped it, we don't mess with what they had. What we do is we add like an, an F24 key um, to add the copy path. And then we send the F24 key without a hotkey in order to mimic the thing and that way we don't mess with the user settings um, themselves we, we edit the JSON file where it's stored but it allows us to um, use our tool really easily and it doesn't matter if you've assigned your own hotkey or not it'll still work next um, grab this one I was trying to rip some videos and then I found a different way to do it but we were looking inspecting the HTML to I want to be able to download videos from a channel schedule so Irfan's working on a class to make it easy to add things without a hotkey like a simple script that would add them as a task scheduler to leverage the fact the task scheduler you don't need to have an auto hockey script running it's kind of run in the background so to speak and you could say I want it run weekly daily at this time once a month whatever right so in, in, a, in the hero call we talked through the logic. This is one of the really cool things we teach in our, our hero program is the decision-making process, how you go through and identify the things that change, right? And how you decide what goes in your functions and what parameters you should have. So as I talked through that kind of stuff of what he, how he made his decisions on what should be parameters and what shouldn't be. So that was, um, we haven't released this one yet, but that's one that's in the works. Um, this is another one we're converting from V2 to V2 from V1. Uh, it allows you to easily merge um, files, but ask if you want to merge. Yeah, ask when you go to merge them. Um, and, and it's just basically appending them, removing the header row. I'm going from memory, but yeah. Uh, again, the script object, search and place in Word. I demoed this last week, so I'm not going to show you, but it, it just allows me to... So, Actually, I don't think I have to select the text, but I can just hit a hotkey and it will go and search for text and replace it really in the blink of an eye, which is really helpful. Because no one wants to blink. No, I'm kidding. Um, all right. Newsletter, pretty links. So we're working on that. Add to list. So we're revamping how we do our auto hockey newsletter. And we're pushing it more into the server. So I won't have to run stuff every day on my computer. And we're... Um, it was fine with auto hockey, but I was running it every day to go update it. Now, here was an interesting one was... Um, add to, actually, this one was our server tool in WordPress. The plugins we bought. You can generate things... But on the checkout, there's a different form we're using to ask, like, your familiarity with AutoHotKey, how long you've been using it, if you're a manager or entrepreneur or, you know, a student, whatever. Well, those are in a different table in WordPress in the database 
And our tool that has a newsletter doesn't allow you to sync those because they're, they're not aware of each other. It's not something's built in. Tools like that would cost a lot of money. So Isaiah and I sat through it and said, we can programmatically access those tables with MySQL. Let's just write a script that we run it like once a week that says, hey, get the most recent things, like the, let's go back the last week or two weeks, get everyone who's made an order, see if they have those flags, and then update them in the newsletter list, right? So it took us uh, about an hour to write the SQL queries and get it, test it working right properly. Now we have something we can just hit a button and it will go weekly and go check that and update our list. So um, it just saves you know a lot of money and time and we don't have to manually do it, right? It's done, done once and forget about it. Uh, and then we have a way to also now extract, of course I can't run this, but we have roughly 5,500-ish um, active newsletter subscribers. Uh, if you're not on the list, I'll try to remember to put the URL up here. Um, so you subscribe, we, we send out a new weekly newsletter. Uh, same stuff here, object tree. I found a V2, kind of like the M function for Mastery where you can peek inside of objects and uh, in arrays and, and just text files. Um, I found one that Hotkey, it, who's the creator of Auto Hotkey H, had written in V2 like five years ago. And so I asked Isaiah to take a look at it and see it didn't run. And I said, hey, how hard would this be to convert it to V2? And he started looking at it and then we realized it, it's gonna, it would need a lot of work. So we stopped on that. But if, if anyone here has a way to look inside of objects and arrays and maps in V2, um, let me know. I haven't, I haven't even looked for it yet, but if you're aware of one, I'd love to hear it. So again, updates on prompt assistant. We've had some cool new, now it's not released yet, but this is one cool thing. Um, if I click here and I'm on this, and let's say this is a snippet, right? So this is just a text snippet with paste text, but what if I just want it on my clipboard because I didn't actually highlight the editor where I want it to go. Now if I hit, if I hold down control and shift clicked, it will show me, hey, that's on the clipboard and I can go in here and paste. So that's what was supposed to be there. Or, Alternatively, if I say, hey, this, I want to edit this, if I hold down control and click it, now it pulls up that snippet for me, right? So it saves the time of having to come in here and say, oh, I'm going to right click, I want to customize, and now I have to navigate to remember, you know, where it is, which honestly, it's not horrible, but again, why not, right? So we built that functionality into there. I think that's pretty cool. Um, clip history, this is coming along. Um, Irfan has been working on this, and we'll demo it later, but it's, uh, you know how this Windows V shows you, like, your clipboard history of what you had on your clipboard? Uh, this tool is going to be, it has two interfaces. One's a search tool to show you back in your history, and you can choose how long you want to save the history for. Uh, but also, we're tying it in with our auto-suggester, so you can turn it on and start typing, and it will offer things that are in your clipboard history for you, right? So I think that's going to be a no-brainer. I'm going I'm to really like playing with that. Um, so they were working with the GUI and some of the other functionality, but that one's coming along. Um, uh, so Thomas, a client's been working on some stuff. Isaiah has been helping him a little bit of under understanding the bug, um, reporting it to Lexicos, because I think there was actually a problem with AutoHotKey was having a bug with it and stuff, and so we were testing around it. Um, the share zoom window. So I have a script. I have a, I can't, I have a, a it's kind of funny because it's taped to my desk. I have a shelf and I have it taped to it, so I can't easily show it here. Maybe I can take a picture and overlay it. But it, um, I ha it's got three buttons, and so one of them is just to share this desktop, so I can hit the button instantly in Zoom, and it will share that desktop. And um, the problem was in Sight, if I was in here, it uses Control One and Control One, which as you can see now I don't have my message box creator because it's. It's a great idea, but it's a horrible thing to do because your GUIs are static, right? So I don't even have the toolbars anymore. I, I looked in the site to say, actually, you can right-click up here and say, like, edit reload toolbar, but there's an edit toolbar, edit global toolbar, edit global auto run script. So I'm going to edit the global toolbar. I came in here, and I basically disabled everything, and that was these buttons. And I don't know if... Um, you know, if if that also is, I think from site, I remember now, this is, I think, where you're telling it, use the control one. So let me hit control one. Hopefully that still doesn't work. Oh, it, what? So ironically, my um, my Zoom share the desktop 
thing ran because that's the hotkey I have for it. But Zoom's not running. I decided to record this one in OBS um, mainly because, like, a couple times I've gone to do this and I forget in Zoom to share my screen. And I spend, spend 30 minutes and then I realize I didn't share my screen um, and, and it was wasted. So, anyway, so, um, yeah, I've removed that from site because I would use this in site and it would pull up the message box creator or in Excel, the control one is something I use a lot as a hotkey to, to pull up your font and format, you know, um, dialog box. So, um, I have exclusions in them for that, but, um, I do need to now, I need to kill, um, I should only do that if Zoom exists. I hadn't thought of that, so I need to make sure I do a check in there to say, is Zoom running? I, normally, I, it's not a problem because I wouldn't hit that if Zoom's not running. That'd be dumb, but yeah, so that's that. The shell hooks uh, messages, I was playing around on our hero calls. We were talking about different things. As I mentioned, the, the courses and stuff, and I think, let me move this over. Um, shell hooks are amazing. We have some good videos. This is all V1 stuff, but this... This, this is it. So if I like activate this, this shows you when when some shell hooks are tripped, right? And and I'm like, hey, maybe we should make something like this to help demystify shell hooks, right? And to, to understand most things you can use like with between shell hooks and messages in, in Windows, the post and send message stuff, you can automate almost any program. So um, there are really untapped Auto hotkey wraps those things to where you don't have to learn how to use those because they give you simple commands for doing the majority of stuff. But sometimes you can't do exactly what you want. And that's when learning shell hooks and post and send messages really give you much more minutia of doing exactly what you want. You want to do things only when something exists. They're also a great way, instead of looping over and saying, is a window exists or did something happen? A shell hook gets registered and you're watching for an event to happen, but it's all done in like in C, which is the most optimized, you know, version. And so if like a GUI comes up, it's a blink of an eye. There's no looping and waiting for things to happen. It's really fast. In the sort in Explorer, I have a tool that automatically, when I open a Explorer window, it sorts them on the most recently um, modified. And that's one... In the video, I showed three different approaches. One, you have a hotkey. One, I forget what the second one was, but the other one was using a shell hook to sort it on it. And that was the one I went with and still keep it with. Uh, really handy. So, anyway, I think we were at the end of our list. Yeah, this URI was actually like nothing. So, all right, hope you enjoyed that. Um, please like the video if it helped you out. And uh, if so, I'll keep making more videos like this. Have a great day. Cheers.